Hey folks, Quill18 here. It's Just to wanted to let you know that uh, Path of Exile version 1.0, like the actual full final release, has finally hit the interwebs, and it's actually even available on Steam, which is great, because now you get to use the Steam patcher instead of the really god-awful patcher that Path of Exile used to have. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it's an action RPG, very Diablo style. Um, it's completely free to play. There's a store built in there where you can buy various things, but none of them are pay to win. Um, there are just going to be stuff, like the only thing that has any real in-game effect is you can get some extra space in your stash. Other than that, it's like cosmetic things, like uh, ways that you can uh, add special effects to your characters, or uh, tweak the look of items, or get little pets, that sort of thing. Uh, fantastic game, really, really fun to play. Um, I'm, I'm in a dungeon right now, so obviously the graphics, you know, here are going to be pretty dark and dank, but frankly, most of the game is, you know, it's it's relatively monotone in color scheme. It's like, it, it's funny because when Diablo 3 came out, a lot of people were like, oh, it's going to be too cartoony. And with this, people were like, well, maybe it could be a little bit more cartoony. Um, just to show that you can never uh, please everyone in the world all the time. Ooh, this one is camouflaged. Um, but uh, yeah, for, to me, the only possible thing I could say about this game is like, well, sometimes the graphics are a little too too grungy monotone, uh, and maybe I want uh, a little bit more pop to it. But other than that, it's great fun. This is a low-level character that I just re-rolled because uh, they started its new league. So yeah, so, um, I mean, you can just make a character in the so-called standard league, right? And it's, you know, your typical kind of uh, action RPG kind of experience. And there's also a hardcore league where uh, if you die in there, uh, your character, well, your character's not erased or anything like that. That's like, you know, true hardcore. Uh, in here, what happens if your character dies in Hardcore League? It boots you out to the Standard League. But for most people who play, you know, who want to play Hardcore, that's the same as a character death. It's like, oh, well, now it's not Hardcore anymore. And playing Hardcore is really, really fun because it adds um, a hell of a lot more excitement to the game. Uh, because every encounter is that much scarier. And it's funny because in here, it is played online. You do have to be online. Um, to play the game, as far as I know. Um, there's a chat system, and you'll see, like, I'll get a message like, oh, uh, this happened recently. It's like someone who was in the seventh position. He's like level, I don't know, one billion. Well, not actually, but uh, is that worth carrying? Yeah, so we can sell that. Um, and it'll say, you know, this person died. Uh, seventh position on the ladder, you know, super high level characters. And you're like, ah, ah. Um, until it happens to you. Um, so, uh, yeah, and actually, the reason that I'm a, another Lobby character here, not that I've ever had a high-level character at any point, um, but is because they also had a new league that they started. I believe I'm in the, uh, I think I'm, yeah, I'm in the Nemesis League, which is a hardcore league, but with the extra catch that uh, rare monsters will have an extra modifier applied to them. You saw that camouflage guy a little bit ago. Uh, that was, I think, his Nemesis mod. So it increased the difficulty slightly. Uh, the bonus to playing in here, though, there are a few items that you can't get in any other mode. Oof. Oh god, the stuns. Stuns are bad. Oh, that is really bad, because I don't have a potion that breaks that. I'm hoping to just kite him out alone, so I can fight him solo. I do really good single target damage here. Boom. Let's get some more superior items, just probably play the vendor. Oh god! Lagaporting. That's never good. So apparently I was not actually standing where I thought my character was standing. Uh, very, very rarely I believe in issue. traveling light. All right, so I got a bunch of crap to sell. Um, actually, I'm just picking up way too many things in general. I don't need to pick up the scepter. Um, I was just tempted to look at the bow. Uh, or, no, it's fine. Let, let's just keep moving for now. Um, do, 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 do. I'm too low level for this gear to actually be, like, stupendously good. Um, so, what else makes this game different from something like, say, Diablo? Well, uh, whereas Diablo took the direction of having basically very limited choices in your character build, but had them all be very important. I mean, you're, you're completely swapping out an entire ability from your character. Uh, but although, on the other hand, your choices are never permanent, and I don't know, I really like talent trees. So, um, Path of Exile is very renowned for having a huge passive talent tree. This is the talent tree for Path of Exile. What's notable is that uh, this talent tree is shared by all classes. So I am playing a duelist here, so I started right here in my talent tree. Um, and if you're playing a marauder, which is the big barbarian type, you would start here. The, um, this is the, I can't remember his name, the paladin -y kind of guy is here, the cleric, I don't know. Uh, the witch starts here, the shadow starts here, and the ranger starts here. Roughly speaking, um, the bottom third, so from here, 
to like here-ish. So this whole slice, this third, is all dexterity kind of stuff. Uh, the top-ish here is going to be intelli intelligence, intellect, that sort of thing. And down here is strength. So the Marauder is a... I'm being attacked. So the Marauder, for example, is a very strength-oriented character. Uh, he starts in the, the super strengthy area. Um, and then the Ranger is a very dexterity-oriented character. And then you've got the Duelist, who's skirting the line between strength and dexterity. Um, but you can wander all over. You can start here and end up up here if you wanted to. Although if you really wanted to get up here, you would probably just pick a witch. And that's the biggest difference between the classes is simply uh, where you start in a talent tree. And technically they have slightly different base stats and how their stats increase by level. So as a witch, you'll generally have higher intellect naturally. But that, that's pretty much it. Everything else is super flexible customization and finding interesting uh, combos. Again, this tree is still just the passive tree. So most of them, some of these are just, you know, bonus to attack speed. Some of this will be bonus to dexterity. Dexterity. This one gives me both an increased attack speed and dexterity, like it's a bigger one, it stands out. So usually what you're trying to do is you're looking at some of these bigger things and being like, okay, I want to go there. Now what path do I want to take through the tree to get there? Um, and some of them really have huge effects on your characters, especially these big roundy ones. There are various capstone abilities that have dramatic changes. So this will convert all evasion to armor. So instead of being able to dodge things, I'm just going to be able to like just soak the hit outright. And I'm I'm generally a fan of this because I find sometimes when your character is based on dodging things, sometimes things can be bursty. Yeah, you dodge nine times out of ten, but when that one out of ten hits you, it really, really hurts. And frankly, I would rather be hit more often, but have each uh, blow do a tenth of the damage, and then I can at least gauge the life, you know, so I'll see myself go down slowly and be like, okay, I'm in trouble, I need to drink a potion, instead of going from full to here instantly, and, you know, and not dodging twice in a row and then getting completely screwed. Uh, so all kinds of bad things can happen there. Uh, there I am being attacked again. All right, uh, it is multiplayer, of course. Uh, there's co-op. There's some PvP dueling arena things, I think, but I really haven't explored that. It is a hell of a lot of fun to play with friends. So again, passive tree. And if you don't know, the way you get your active skills, because again, the classes don't really matter. Active skills are all provided by these gems. So on my left mouse button, I have a dual strike ability, and it's because I have this dual strike gem equipped in my sword. On my right click, I have a cleave, and I think cleave is, yeah, I got it installed in my helmet. Um, and so anyone can use any ability. I can use like fireball spells if I want. The catch is that the gems do level up. They gain experience. As long as they're equipped, they will gain experience as you kill things. And as they go up, their requirements go up. Um, and red gems generally require strength, green gems generally require dexterity, blue gems generally require intellect. So um, I would have a hard time keeping my fireball gem leveled up as a duelist because I don't really have a high innate in intellect. So I would have to equip gear that would give me bonus to int, or I would have to maneuver around the tree, okay freezing is really bad, um, so that I could get some passive talents that give me some more intellect, which is actually the, the more likely way for me to, uh, to get some of those. Uh, in there. So, but it does give you a lot of interesting choices when generating characters. Yeah, there's plenty of cooker, cookie cutter builds, especially if, you know, people are uh, following uh, streamers or guides on the forums or things. Um, but even then, with the generally cookie cutter build, uh, you've got flexibility in terms of what order you go around and grab things, and a lot of side nodes, optional nodes. Like, you'll see a lot of people describe their characters uh, based on a couple of capstone abilities. You know, like, I will probably be I will be an Iron Reflexes duelist, right? If I go back in here, I want Iron Reflexes. So that's, you know, that says a lot about the sort of things you might pick up on your character. But I'm still going to be pretty different than a lot of others. Um, uh, I, I don't know what my end game's going to look like. Early on, it's going to be, you know, there's some really good stuff early on. I guess it's kind of tempting. So mostly I'm going attack speed, melee damage, and anything that'll help me survive, especially since I'm in hardcore mode here. So I'm gonna, yeah, grab some stuff over here, which is gonna be just more health. 12% maximum health, 8% max health, 8% max health, life regen per second. That sort of thing is gonna be great. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna pick up iron reflexes. And uh, Leather and Steel is going to be great because it gives me more evasion rating and armor. Now, it doesn't stack twice with the Iron Reflexes. It's not like you get 24% more evasion and then it turns into armor and then you get 24% more armor. It doesn't work that way. That would be, that would be silly if it did. Uh, but it's still 24% more defense is, is what that translates to and it's going to be great. If you're playing in non-hardcore, uh, you can actually avoid uh, that sort of, you know, 
all the bonus life armor. I mean, not all of it. You still want some, but you don't have to focus quite as much as I might be doing here, for example, um, because death is not going to be quite as bad. Although it's certainly inconvenient, and I think you might lose experience points when you get to higher levels and you die. Um, so you, generally speaking, you, you still want to avoid dying, and certainly some bosses might be really quite difficult to beat um, with not very many hit points, because they might just, you know, kill you in, if you fail to dodge a single special attack or, or something of that nature. Um, so, still a good idea. Anyway, I think this game is fantastic amounts of fun. Uh, one of the other things, if you don't know, there's no actual currency, there's no gold in the game. And there's certainly no auction house. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's no gold. Instead, every, they have things they call, people call currency items. But each one of those things, it actually has some kind of use. Okay, so we've got another unique boss here, and he actually raises the dead, so we're going to have to focus firing him down, use my cleave attacks. Like, I don't want to get overwhelmed, but also I've got to kill him so that he stops just raising creatures. Thank you. Oh, and he dropped a, a gem for me. So yeah, those spell gems, uh, you get some very early on, just as quest rewards. Um, so, you know, you're going to have some abilities, and again, they're going to be very classic abilities ah, come on, for your, your character archetype. Uh, but then the gems do drop randomly as well. Um, and uh, there's some that you can only get from, you know, higher level monsters. And uh, and they're not, nothing is soul bound in this game. So, well, at least as far as I know, nothing is soul bound ever, which means you can always uh, put items in your stash and have your other characters use them. So, for example, this summon skeleton here. Uh, see, I don't have the intellect to use it. 29. Yeah, I'm quite low. I'd have to equip an intellect boosting item to... Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't know if I've got one, uh, to equip this. But I can put it in my stash, and then if I play a witch in the same league, has to be the same league, uh, then the witch would have access to that. In fact, I will want to bank that kind of stuff, because hey, if I die, actually, as this character, I have to start a new one, and then I will base my new character, perhaps, on what I have in my stash. So if I happen to have a lot of good witch stuff, then I will play a witch. Um, and I like the witches. I've played like three different low-level witches at this point and experimented with all kinds of different things. Hey, just leveled up. Mm -hmm. And the pacing is pretty good. Um, the late game is also awesome. So there's three major acts. Uh, the levels are all randomly generated, um, although this sort of like world map is all the same. So right now I'm currently in the prison and I'm basically looking to work my way through the prison so then I can get to the next area over here. Oh, it looks like I missed a waypoint. That's too bad. Um, how did I miss the waypoint in the climb? It's pretty linear. Hmm. Um, and so yeah, so it's randomly generated going around. But what's interesting is when you finish all three acts and then beat the game, now this is normal difficulty. So of course it repeats on like, I think it's nightmare difficulty. And then you beat the whole game again and you repeat again on like the next higher difficulty. And then after that, you stay on like the, the highest difficulty, um, whatever the final difficulty is. And, um, but then there starts to be these map scrolls that get dropped. And they are like totally procedurally generated areas in that the scrolls will have modifiers. They'll be like, oh, on this map, uh, monsters will drop 25% uh, they're 25% more likely to drop a magic item. They're like, well, that's awesome. The scroll also says that monsters are immune to fire damage and do bonus lightning damage or something like that. You're like, oh, that's bad. Um, and, and so each one of these maps will have a fairly distinctive um, experience. And some might be better suited to your character, some might not be. I think there's ways to re reroll the modifiers on maps. Um, or you could always just trade with people. Uh, there, of course, is a global chat and a trade chat. If you started playing the game and the chat is annoying you, um, over here, the chat button, you can toggle off of the global and trade chats there. Um, but yeah, oh, the currency. I didn't really talk about it, but um, here's an example of a currency item. Blacksmith's Whetstone. You right-click it and then click on a weapon, and it will prove the quality of weapon. Um, so uh, I think on non-magic items, it would give us 5% more quality. So it'll do you know 5% more damage, for example. Um, and then if it's a magic item, it does slightly less, and if it's a rare, it does even less. I think on a rare, it does a 1% bonus to the quality. Um, and the quality always caps out at 20. Uh, but you can use that item, if you find a really good item that you really like, you can use this thing to just buff the, uh, the built-in damage. Um, there's another version for, um, 
for armor and, and, and little things like that. But that's what people will trade in as well. And when you bring loot back to town and you sell it to the NPC vendors, they will give you some of these currency items. And different combos of items will give you uh, different currency. So like a normal generic item will just end up giving you, ooh, chromatic orb. We'll reforge the color of the sockets. Um, where is it? Here, right? So like if I really like this piece of item, but I really need something with green sockets, uh, then I can use the chromatic orb on it and it will give me, you know, it'll re-roll them. I might get green sockets and then it's great. Um, so, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. yeah, so, but there are these recipes that you can sell to the vendors. Like if you sell items with a certain amount of quality rating, they will give you the whetstones, the uh, weaponsmith or armorsmith's whetstones that we were just talking about. Um, if you find an item on the ground that's got one socket of every color, then I believe that that will give you a uh, one of those prismatic orbs or chromatic orbs, for example. So there's a there's wiki pages that will show you all those vendor recipes, so you can kind of start to know what to pick up and what not to pick up. But you don't need to stress about that earlier. Um, you know, just play the game, just level up and enjoy yourself and learn things organically. You're gonna have a great time. Um, yeah, the potions you just have five slots for your flasks. Um, and you've got to make you with what you've got and uh, you've like the slots the, the potions themselves the flasks are permanent They every time you use one It uses a certain amount of the stuff But every time you kill a monster your flask gains a charge I don't know if you noticed that there uh, so it currently has 29 if I kill this guy it'll have 30 Right, so uh, and it, that that flask is a max of 45. So the flasks recharge themselves. Ooh, that's interesting um so you don't have to like micromanage your potion inventory, but you can't just drink infinitely because it takes time for them to fill up again. And yeah, there you can find magic flask with different abilities like this one here can hold more charges and gives me elemental resistance while uh, it's healing because the potions all heal you, you know, over a couple of seconds or something like that. Uh, although there are mods that make the potions heal you faster or instantly. Uh, there is a flask that um, can give you a bonus to movement speed. Um, there is, I don't know if it's saying... It, My the spirit is spent. If it's the movement speed flask that can have a modifier that breaks you out of, um, like, bonds, like if you get frozen like that, I, or if it's a different thing altogether. Uh, I can't remember. It's just been too long since I've seen one. But yeah, so there's all kinds of different features. Anyway, it's a fantastic game. Um, really, really, really well done. And again, free to play. Like, here, you know, you can buy points and um, you, you can add... Uh, there, you can get a flaming effect for your swords, right? And I think on, oh, not not on this league, on one of the other characters, I have like wings that I can equip. And, um, yeah, I don't know. There's wings I can equip on my character, for example. And certainly the extra account tabs in my stash was like the biggest thing. Oh, I can get a dance. Now that. You want to change the look of your abilities. It, like, it's cosmetic. No pay to win. It's just, it's pay to awesome, is what it is. And seriously, if you play this game and you enjoy it, you know, throw the developer a few bucks because uh, it's cool. Anyway, that's it for this video. See you guys next time.